Well, welcome to the Connection Point Worldview podcast, and uh, I'm joined this week by Dr. Zach Breitenbach. He is uh, one half of our Worldview department at Connection Point Christian Church in uh, central Indiana, and this is a podcast designed to help you as a parent or maybe a guardian go a little bit deeper into uh, places that your student has already gone. We're wanting to get you caught up and uh, hopefully get you equipped as well. You can have some good conversations with your student that uh, um, you can carry into the week, you know, continue to have these these conversations. We'll drill down what they're learning, but also probably pick up some stuff for yourself. So um, we're working our way through a series right now on the essentials of Christianity, uh, the gospel in particular. You finished, uh, Zach, talking about the core of the gospel today. Um, Give us an overview of this week and how it builds on the prior weeks, if you would. Yeah, so we're we're tracking along with Pastor John's Jesus Loves Loves Me book, which is really about basic Christian beliefs, Christian essentials, and it goes along with uh, uh, the familiar song, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Uh, And so each week we've been kind of going along with that. First week was on Jesus. Uh, that who he was, that he's human, that he's God, that he's sinless, that he's the Messiah, the Son of God. Uh, so we did Jesus, then we uh, we talked about the love of God, uh, the loves part, how Jesus died on the cross uh, for our sins and the significance of what that is. We talked about me, uh, meaning humanity, uh, creation, uh, what humans are, that we're made in God's image, that we're valuable but we're broken by sin and we need a savior. Uh, and so really this is the this is the gospel message. And uh, this week we get into uh, how do you accept this good news, this gospel? How do I accept salvation, the greatest gift ever offered? Uh, and so we're talking especially about grace and faith. We're saved by grace through faith. And what does that really mean? Um, and we also talk about baptism, which is something Jesus commands us to do when we accept Christ. That's really cool. I know we, we were talking that, uh, you know, it's easy for us to take advantage of, uh, take the gospel for granted. And, you know, just mm-hmm. it's something we've had since uh, we can kind of remember it's kind of been around. and But yeah. increasingly so, like, that's not the case with a whole lot of people. Um, and certainly students, um, if they haven't grown up around it, then a lot of these terms and yeah. really are helpful to be defined. Um, if you don't have Pastor John Dickerson's book, Jesus Loves Me, you can get that at Amazon or wherever else, but I'd highly recommend it. I, I read it a couple years back, and even as a long-term Christian, it was super helpful and mm-hmm. succinct and uh, just a really kind of a thing of beauty. So go grab Jesus Loves Me if you don't have it already. Um, So you started out by introducing this term gospel, a word we use a lot, but not everybody can define. So Zach, what is the gospel in quotes in a nutshell? Yeah. So uh, yeah, this is a, a term you'll hear at church all the time. You may hear about Southern gospel music. You hear this word, but a lot of Christians don't even know what it means. Uh, It just means good news. It's the good news about what Jesus did for you. And it's always good to be able to put it in a nutshell for people. Uh, And so that's what we started off with uh, with the middle schoolers uh, this past uh, Sunday. It's like, okay, if someone were to ask you what is Christianity basically, what's it all about, and you were going to present the gospel to them, basically you'd want to explain that that Jesus, uh, who is God, came into the world and took on human form when this would be the fancy word for that would be the incarnation. Jesus is God. He came into the world. He died for our sins and he proved that he died for our sins by, by rising from the dead. He resurrected. And then, uh, he offers us forgiveness of sins by his grace through faith. And that last part is what we talked about this time. That last part of the gospel. It's, it's how do I accept this gift? How do I receive it? Um, and so we're getting into uh, grace and faith a lot this week. Awesome. Well, you can go back and catch uh, weeks one through three of uh, this this podcast series uh, to get deeper into Jesus and us and then that work on the cross. But uh, to introduce salvation by grace and faith, uh, you cited Galatians 2.16, which says that nobody can be made righteous by works of the law. We can only be made right with God by faith in Jesus. 
He then talked about how this is a unique concept amongst uh, world religions. Talk talk about that a little bit. Yeah, Christianity is is very unique among the the, the major world religions in that it's a, a religion based on God's grace and not by earning it uh, through our own efforts. And so, um, yeah, Galatians two sixteen says, by the works of the law, by by earning it, by living up to God's standards, nobody will be made right with God. It's just not the right path. The only path is by faith in Jesus. And uh, yeah, it's it's not the way other religions are. Islam, for example, uh, teaches in the Quran that there's this uh, this balance scale, and when you're judged uh, at the end of time. Uh, your good deeds are going to be weighed out against your bad deeds. Good deeds on one side of the scale, bad deeds on the other. And uh, you better well hope that your good deeds outweigh Mm, your bad. mm. Uh, And of course, you can never know in this life whether that's the case. And so you can never know your status with God. Mm. You never really know Mm -hmm. and you can't know. Um, And I even put an an animated uh, picture up of this this balance scale moving around, which I got off of... um, uh, a Muslim website, and I cited the verses in the Quran. This is what Muslims believe, but uh, but Christianity is different. It's it's not about uh, being good because uh, I would have no confidence that my good deeds would ever outweigh my my bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know just my thought life on a daily basis. Right. You know, it's it's uh, the odds aren't in my favor of, of coming out on the right side of that one. Yeah. So uh, thankfully. Christianity is a religion of grace, and we'll get into what that means. So Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that's perhaps the most famous verse that talks about salvation by grace through faith. Talk about that verse and then tell us what grace means. Yeah. Yeah. So Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 says, uh, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Uh, boast. So this is uh, a gift of God. Grace has to do with being a gift. Um, it's not from yourself so that you can uh, boast. It's not something you can work for. Uh, so what would be a good definition of God's grace? I'd say it's this. Uh, God's grace is a gift that therefore cannot be earned, cannot be deserved, that God pays for and kindly gives to us. So it means God gives us better than we deserve mm. as a gift. Uh, so if uh, if I give somebody a hundred dollars for cutting my grass, uh, well, that's that's not a gift. That's something that they earn. That's their wages. But a gift is something you don't earn. Uh, and so we talked about in the case of what Jesus did for us, uh, we didn't deserve it. Nobody uh, can ever require. Uh, a sinless person to be punished in your place uh, so that you don't have to to be punished. This is something you don't deserve, something you can't earn. It's also something you can never repay. All you can do is just accept it and be glad because uh, you can never pay God back for what he did. And grace, we often talk about grace is free, free grace. Well, it, it's sort of free. It's free to us, mm-hmm. but it's not free mm-hmm. to God. It, yeah, it still right. has to be paid for like any gift, yeah. right? Like yeah. if I were to give you a $1,000, uh, that cost me something. I had to work and earn that money. Uh, and so it wasn't a free gift for me, mm-hmm. but it's free to you because you didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. I just gave it to mm-hmm. you as better than, than you deserve something you didn't earn. And so when Jesus died on the cross, it is grace. It is a gift that God pays for. He kindly gives us, and and it's better than than we deserve. I love it. Now that now that we've then defined grace, um, talk to us about faith, Doctor Zach. What what did you say faith is? Yeah. So faith. I think a good definition of this. There's sort of two parts to it, right? The first part is the believing part, right? Mm-hmm. Believing that. The gospel is true, that Jesus really died for your sins, right? That this is really available to you, that he is who he claimed to be, and that uh, salvation is available through him. So it's it's believing all the right stuff, believing it's true. Mm -hmm. But that's not all that faith is. Uh, The Bible even says that even the demons believe in God, and they they tremble in in James 2.19. 
the demons know who God is. They know who Jesus is. Yeah. They know Jesus is the son of God, that he died for people's sins. They know all the things that mm-hmm. the Bible teaches, and they know that they're true. Mm-hmm but they don't accept them mm-hmm. for themselves. They, they don't entrust themselves to God and commit themselves to God. Mm-hmm. And that's why James 2.19 says, the demons believe and yet they tremble because they don't accept it. Mm-hmm. So there's a second part to faith. The first part is believing the gospel. The second part is committing yourself to God, trusting yourself to him, which involves uh, repentance and trusting yourself to God. Um, we can definitely believe things are true uh, and yet not commit to them. We, we could come up with a lot of examples. We might believe it'd be good for me not to be on uh, cocaine and heroin and live a life of drugs, and yet I'm not willing to commit myself to that sort of a right, life. Right. I might believe uh, it would be best for me not to cheat on my wife uh, and to be loyal. It would be better for her and our family, and I believe all that's true, and yet I'm not willing to commit myself to that sort of a life. Mm-hmm. Um we, I played a video of, of this famous story of this fellow, this French fellow named Blondine, uh, who, who walked in the 1800s, walked this tightrope uh, above Niagara Falls. <laughs> yes. And uh, he, was, he would do all kinds of stunts, you know, even cooking an omelet, you know, <laughs> while he's up there and pushing a wheelbarrow across. And, you know, he was said to have uh, asked the crowd and, and the, this, this duke in particular, hey, would you, uh, do you think, do you believe that I'm able to push somebody across this rope in a wheelbarrow. Do mm-hmm. you believe that I can do that? And the Duke's like, oh, yeah, I believe you could do that. I've seen you're amazing. <laughs> you could definitely do it. And then Blondine's like, all right, get in. <laughs> and then the Duke's like, ah, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. And yeah. neither would anybody else in the crowd, except uh, legend has it uh, Blondine's mother uh, got in, whether yeah. that's true or not. But the the point is there's a difference between uh, believing something is true and, and actually being willing to get in the wheelbarrow, right? So uh, we might believe all the right things about Jesus, but in order to have faith, we have to be willing to commit. Mm-hmm. And there's many reasons we may not want to get in the wheelbarrow and actually commit, even if we think it's true. Maybe I don't want to give up my sin, and, and I know what kind of a life Jesus calls me to, and I just don't want to live that life. Maybe it would cost me my reputation or my job, Um because they're not going to tolerate me being a Christian, and, and I just don't want that. Maybe uh, there's parts of the world where you could die, uh, lose your friends, lose your family. You could die for your faith. These are hard sacrifices. There's all kinds of reasons why someone might believe Christianity but but not be willing to commit. So, so true faith requires both belief and committing. And part of this commitment is, is repenting. Uh, in Acts 2.38, when the, the first gospel message was preached uh, by Peter, he was asked, well, what, how do we respond to this? What do we do? And the first thing he said in Acts 2.38 had to do with repentance. Um, so repenting means you're, being, you're sorry for your sins and you want to uh, stop living a life of sin and, and start following God. It doesn't mean you earn it. It doesn't mean you're perfect. Mm-hmm. But it means you no longer want to be a slave to sin anymore. You want to commit to God. Um, and so that's faith. It's entrusting your, it's believing the truth about Jesus and entrusting yourself to him, saying, God, I want to live a life committed to you and make you my savior and my Lord and follow you. That's, that's awesome. Well, so, so accepting Jesus really isn't complicated per se, but, um, how would you, how would you sum it all up then? Yeah. To sum all that up of like what I was just saying is like, just tell God, God, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe in who he is and what he did. Please forgive my sins. Uh, I repent of my sins. I don't want to live that life anymore. I want to live for you. Mm. That's really all you got to say, right? Mm-hmm. So you captures the belief part. You mm-hmm. believe who he is and you're, the commitment part. You're, you're, you're asking him to forgive your sins. You're repenting. You're saying, I'm sorry for my sin and I want you to save me, um, not by anything I do, but by what you do. Uh, and then... Um, once you have accepted Christ in that way, uh, it's important to be baptized. Jesus commands it. Um, we talked a little bit about what baptism means. Um, it literally means to dunk in Greek, the word that we translate as baptism. Uh, really a transliteration. It's, it's just taking the Greek word baptizo, which means to dunk, mm-hmm. um, and uh, making an English word out of it. 
And so Jesus says, go into the world and make disciples of me and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is something we, we should take seriously. And we talked about what it means in Romans 6, 3 to 4, talks about how you're buried when you're when you are baptized, it represents being buried in the water to your old life of sins. You're dying to that, and you're being raised up to the newness of life in Christ. Um, just as Christ was raised by the glory of the Father, we too can walk in, in the newness of life. So, um, And we actually had a couple students came forward Sunday and said, hey, I want to do that. I want to be baptized, which was, awesome. which was awesome. Yeah, That's so great. Well, I, I think we'd probably be remiss to not invite those of you that are listening or uh, uh, may, maybe you've got somebody you've been praying for and you need to be able to share kind of simply what the gospel is or what they might need to do to receive Jesus as their Lord. Um, but if that's you even, then uh, just know we're praying for you and uh, you can always reach out to us here. If you were to make a decision like that yourself um, to follow Jesus, then the beauty is you're invited into a family, uh, yeah. a church family and community where you don't have to walk it out alone. And uh, so however we can help, um, we would love to be a part of that that journey. You can go to Connection Point, that's point with an E, dot org, uh, and uh, connect with us that way. Um, we also can send you a free Bible, a Life Application Study Bible, and that's a good place where you can start your own relationship uh, with with Jesus. So um, we'll be praying for you. In the meantime, please reach out if um, you're ready to take that, that step or you already have and you need some help with your uh, first steps. Um, so, Dr. Zach, as we wrap up, What's a good question that parents and students can talk about together as they uh, process this particular lesson? Yeah, you, you might just ask, well, how are we saved? What, what do you think it means uh, to be saved by grace through faith? That would be a great thing to, to talk about, just a basic question. That's what this whole lesson was about. Another thing is, you know, how do you know that you're saved, right? Mm. Because you can know this, unlike in, in Islam, where it's about you, you and your effort and your good and your bad deeds and, and who can really know. Um, you can know. You can know because it's a gift. Mm. Uh, and so maybe talk to your child about the, the blessing of being confident that you know that you're saved. It's possible to really know where you're going to spend eternity and just ask them uh, about that. Ask them how amazing that is, and, and maybe you can have a good conversation about how you're saved and the blessing of, of knowing that you're saved. That's awesome. That's great. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Zach. Um, appreciate this time. And uh, for those of you listening, just thankful for you. We'll be praying for you, and we'll be back before you know it with more resources uh, around the corner. All right. God bless. <laughs>